Hi, I'm Jamie and I'm a processed food addict. Welcome to my channel. This channel is dedicated to addiction to processed foods and the recovery process from it. So I'm so glad you're here today. I'm always glad to see you. And um, I came in today to talk about how I began my recovery. Um, I was reminded of that this week because when life throws us all kinds of things that, that it tends to throw us, um, we need, I find I need to recalibrate and reset and remind myself uh, what it means to be in recovery from processed food addiction. Um, and I really thought about when I started, when I first started, what that was like, uh, the, the challenges, the pitfalls, um, but more importantly, you know, what brought me to it? Um, you know, I was, as, as you guys know, morbidly obese and obese most of my life. Like since I was a very, very small little girl, probably uh, a year or two old. And I knew I had this voracious uh, desire to eat. And so as I grew up and as that, you know, of course, caught up with me in very physical ways and emotional ways, um, I just kept going to food for comfort. I kept going to food to um, give me um, connection and, and comfort and, and certainly numbing um, from anything that life was throwing at me. So 14 years into recovery today, um, I actually am really focused on when, when life does throw all of life's things at me. I'm really focused, of course, on staying out of the food, but more importantly, what I can, um, what I can do to, to find healthy ways to accept discomfort, to accept all the things that, that are happening, um, you know, to me in a given day, or, or some would say happening for me in a given day. Um, and one of those things that I do is I, you know, do a, a reset and a refresh and a reminder of where I started and why I started. Uh, and I've talked about, right, on other videos, I've talked about beginning with my why and how important that is to me. So I won't rehash that, but if you want to check it out, you can check it out on my channel anytime. The thing that I wanted to come in and talk about today was what mindset I had when I started and uh, where, you know, what really led me to it. I was so, you know, by, by the time I was really at my sort of bottom, right, my addictive addiction bottom, um, I was certainly over 400 pounds. I was not looking for scales to find the actual number because most scales that I got on stopped at 350. Uh, and uh, it had been many months and probably a few years since I stopped weighing myself by that point, other than at doctor's offices. And the doctor's offices I was going to only had scales that went to 400 and I was over those. So um, I certainly was very, very sick um, from, from a weight, extra weight perspective. And I was starting to have a lot of other issues, right? Like sleep apnea and I had high blood pressure. I was pre-diabetic. Um, I certainly had a ton of anxiety, a lot of depression, uh, mobility issues and joint issues. And I felt like I was older than my years in so many ways. And I just was consumed with all of the, the outcomes of consuming the food. And so I needed to really um, look at my, my life and look at my health. And you know, when I when I did, I realized that I was essentially slowly killing myself with food, and I just couldn't I couldn't believe it. I, I I loved life. I had I had strong connections with family and friends. I was an overall pretty happy person. Um, but I, there was, there was this dark side to me that, that the food created for me that began to overtake my whole life. It began to overtake my relationships, it began to overtake my marriage. It began to overtake my career. Uh, and it began to, to sabotage these things, right? Where I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to, to. Um, go to work. And if I was at work, I, I wanted to just work remotely so that nobody could see me. I will, you know, and back in those days, working remotely was very rare. It was mostly for people in maybe sales professions and other professions that were sort of in the field. 
And I chose those professions. So I didn't have to engage with people on a regular basis. And more importantly, I didn't have to move on a regular basis. I didn't want to have to get up and go through all the tasks and requirements of daily life on a regular basis. It was painful. It was tiring. Uh, and it certainly was emotionally risky because if I left my house, or when I left my house, I would be ridiculed by total strangers. And I'm certainly not, you know, not trying to play a victim or a martyr. That was the reality that I lived through and it certainly was hurtful. Um, but it was the reality that, you know, other people saw me that way. I have um, a lot of compassion for them that they felt that it was their, that it was their place to comment. Um, and I had a lot of compassion for myself about why I wanted to, to stay home and avoid that. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't a recluse by any means, but I certainly was not, you know, jonesing to leave the house if I didn't need to. And I noticed I just became less and less um, desirous of going to family functions, of going, certainly flying, um, doing any kind of travel. Um, and I thought it was, you know, a fear of flying, a fear of, of maybe, um, you know, almost like trying new things and going new places. But I, I don't think it was a fear of that at all, as much as it was a fear of just going out and moving my body in space, being open to the, all of that unsolicited feedback and, and comments from people in the world. Um, and so I just became this woman who lived to eat. I went from meal to meal to meal, uh, most of them fast food, most of them, um, you know, ordering two and three fast food value meals, as they call them, at, at one time, and acted like I was bringing them home for, for other family members, which was bizarre. There were no other family members at home at the time. Um, I was deeply, certainly, you know, anxious and depressed because of now we know how processed food is manufactured and, and the chemical re reactions in our bodies can cause depression and anxiety, but I thought I was just depressed and I was, there was something wrong with me. Um, and I thought I was just anxious because there was just something wrong with my brain. I didn't know the food was doing this to me. I didn't know the chemicals in these foods and the way that my body and brain reacted to them causes these, these spikes in these neurotransmitters in our brains that can cause depression and anxiety. And I didn't understand how the addictive properties of the foods that I was eating were causing me not only to crave them, but to have these intense spikes in my blood sugar and crashes that caused moodiness and irritability and anger and even some raging fits from time to time. I was becoming this woman I didn't even recognize. And I could feel the light, my light of me dimming inside me over time. And I had a scare um, in one of my last years of my addiction. I had a scare that, um, you know, there was something wrong with the functioning of my heart. And I thought, yeah, like here I am laying on, on a <laughs> cardiologist procedure table while they run a cardiac cath up my leg to inspect the chambers and functioning of my heart. And I could leave this table tomorrow and, and collapse. And who knows what kind of heart issues I could have, or I'm giving myself because of this heavy, heavy um, burden I'm putting on my body, on my psyche, on my spirit. It just, um, that was one of the final straws. But what really led me to recovery was the day that I woke up uh, 14 plus years ago now. Um, and I, it was probably around my birthday it's a time that I often take stock of life. And um, I remember thinking, you know, here I was in my early, early thirties. And I remember thinking first thing in the morning, you're not going to make it to 40 if you don't do something about this. And it, it was my voice. I knew it was me talking to me, but it wasn't me talking to me. It was, it was like my soul saying to me, you will not live till 40 you've got to do something. You cannot stay on this path. And um, I knew, I knew that that voice was right. And I also knew I wanted to live. And I also believe that I had more to do. 
Um, I had no idea how I was going to get myself out of the situation I put myself in, but I knew I somehow had the tools to do it. I just didn't know how I was going to do it. And when I say tools to do it, I mean, I am exceptionally stubborn. I'm exceptionally disciplined and I am uh, a bull in a china shop when I want to be. <laughs> and I knew in um, instinctively that those tools would, would carry me through whatever path I chose to get healthy. Um, and so I, <clears throat> I looked at lots of options for me. Surgery was not an option. Um, I, I felt like they, they fixed the physiology of us, right. But, but surgeons necessarily weren't fixing the, the body mind connection that can lead us to the food. It didn't feel like the right fit for me. Um, I also looked at you know, for a split second, is there another pill that that's out there in the market that they can give me? Well, you know, the pills that I researched had a ton of side effects. And I thought, no, this isn't for me either. And then I just thought, well, I've got to do this the old fashioned way. Otherwise I'm never going to learn anything. I'm never going to let anything that I learned stick. And that was when I just said, okay, I'm just going to do what I know I need to do, which is find a dietitian who can help me find a counselor who I can talk to and just take it one step at a time. And I did. Um, and you know, it, the bulk of, of weight loss happened in the first four years. And the, for the last 10 years or so, I've, I've been um, refining and evolving and uh, certainly do not subscribe. I do not subscribe to this whole theory of, you know, maintaining this is a maybe a dirty little secret in the weight loss world, um, but it's it's my approach certainly to, to my recovery. There is no finish line. There is no finish line. Um, there is never an after photo. There is maybe there, certainly lots of before photos, and maybe there's in process photos. But from my perspective, there's never an after photo because I don't ever want to be done. I don't ever want to be finished. I don't ever, when I'm finished, I'm done. I'm, I'm done learning. I'm done stretching. I'm done growing. I'm done evolving. I don't ever want to be done. And, you know, the health that I have now, the, the, the physical ability that I have now, the mindset I have now, the recovery that I have now today, I couldn't, I didn't have a year ago. I didn't have two years ago and I sure didn't have 14 years ago. So I can only imagine where I'll be in another 14 years. Uh, with mindset, with, with lifestyle, with approaches to health and physical activity as I age and as I progress. And I am, I'm super excited about that. I don't ever want to be an after. I don't ever want to be done. So there is no maintenance mode for me. Um, there's where I am today, what I'm working on today. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to come in and, and just say hi to you guys for a minute. Because what I'm working on today is remembering why I started, where I was when I started, my thought process. And, and it's a question that I get asked a lot, right? You know, you, Jamie, you've lost 230, 40 pounds over the last, you know, 14 years and, and kept it off. And you've done it without surgery and you've done it without pills. And you've, and you've evolved your mindset and changed your physical, your physical fitness. And, and how did you start? Like, what was the, was there one thing? There really wasn't one thing. There was a series of events in a season of life, a very short season of life that caused me to get to a tipping point. And, and that is no pun intended, but it's true. Um, and I'm just really glad that I started the, the journey. It was a painful place to be. It's a painful admission to make to myself. Um, but the freedom it, it has brought me, the healing it has brought me, um, and the work that I've done to get here and, and continue to do every day uh, has freed me, has freed me. Um, and yeah, the, the growth that recovery brings is so rewarding. Um, and so I wanted to come in again and, you know, just share that, share where I was, who I was when I started, um, because I think it's, it's just important in recovery for me to remember that. So thank you all. I'm 
so glad you're here. If you've watched the video to this point, put in comments where you are in your journey. How do you feel about your health, your, your well-being, your, you know, your processed food addiction? Are you in a place that you are accepting that it's, that it's bigger than just weight or body shape? Are you getting to a place where you're starting to see the connection between lifestyle diseases and processed foods? Where are you in your journey? I'd love to know. I'd love to interact with you. Again, I'm really glad you're here and I, I'll see you soon.